of Ravinder. There are two things in the beginning of Parshat Shavuah that bring us directly to this moment. The second one is, of course, the purchase of Marat HaMachpela. As you've heard, Rivka was not a person who compromised easily. She was a person who believed profoundly in whatever she believed in. And she acted accordingly. And I can tell you personally that even those who didn't always agree with Rivka 100% received a good hearing. But at the end, Rivka was right. So Marata Machpela symbolizes one of Rivka's great loves. Great loves in politics. And it's true that if we had more people who had great love about the realities in which we find ourselves, we would probably be a lot better off. So Rivka's, Rivka's great love was Eretz Israel. I mean, I'm not excluding, of course, but accepting her family, which, her, which of course, was her greatest love. Eretz Yisrael, for her, had something to do with the past and the present and the future. And she would never let anybody forget that. And so Eretz Yisrael as was previously stated, somehow started in this parasha. Because even though HaKadosh Baruch Hu promised it to us, that didn't mean that we wouldn't have to take it. And that's what Avram Avinu is showing us. And sometimes what belongs to you and what is so obvious to you may not be obvious to those around you. And sometimes, when you know the truth, you have to act upon that truth. So that Hebron was very important to Rivka. But the second thing at the beginning of the parasha, which I think is important for us today, is that when Sarah Imenu died, Avram Avinu came to speak words of his spade. He knew that you could not depart, allow his wife to depart, without him saying something that was of great importance. And yet you know that whatever Avram Avinu said was not recorded in the Torah. Instead, the first pasuk in the parasha says, Vayu chayesara, she lived, me'ashana, ve'srimshana, ve'sheva shana. That's the hesped, that she lived every year of her life, every moment of every year, every moment of every day, that was the Hespaid. She lived as she was enjoined to do by the fact that she was created by the Rebbeinu Shalala. And you know, Rashi says, what is this? What is this 127 years? Why is that important to us? And Rashi says, a hundred by twenty and 20, like 7. And one way of interpreting that Rashi 
as I was taught, is that there is nothing as good of a life of as a life of constancy, where the emunot, where the beliefs are always with you. They don't change. They're not exchanged. This for that, and that for this. And I think that that was something that we could say about Rivka. She lived her life. She lived her life to the fullest. She had such love for her husband and her family that everybody else saw it. It wasn't something that was a secret. She had love for her ideas. She had love for Eretz Yisrael. And these things remained with her always. They never changed or wavered, wavered. So the Hespay that we want to say about Rivka is the Hespay that Avram Avinu said about his wife, Sarah. What's there to say? It's all there. An open book. All the love, all the dedication, all the devotion to basic ideas, simple things. Eretz Yisrael, Am Yisrael, Torah Yisrael. I mean, what's simpler than all of that? What phrase is there that is easier for us, for easier for us to say? And you know, there's an insight that's, that I saw in the Zohar. Zohar. Jewish book. The Zohar says you have to remember always that not everybody mourns the same way. Not everybody is affected in the same way, even though everybody is affected. So what was what did the Zohar say? The Zohar said even though Sarah Imenu died, she was always remembered in her house. She was always remembered. But Yitzchak, who was comforted to some extent, as we have heard tonight, by Rivka, when he would go into the house, he would see the image of his mother, Sarah. Avraham, however, lo nichnas, lo nichnas, he would stay outside in the chatzer. In other words, the Zohar notes that the children are enjoined to carry on with life. And even though the husband is also enjoined to do the same, the loss is not quite the same. The husband has to grapple with his personal loss, where the future has already been carved in stone when his wife Rivka was still alive. The children are able more easily to see the future and act according to that future. So we have to understand each as an individual and try to comfort the husband, Moshe, in the way that is appropriate and his children, their children, in the way that is, the way that is appropriate. So that this parasha teaches us what the essence of Hespeid is, and also teaches us that the essence of Hespeid is securely tied to the love of Eretz Yisrael. Rivka zichrona levracha shetehei nafsha sura b'tzro hachayim.